What is good internet? It is Spirit of Paradox here and welcome back to another video. And today we have got Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 5. And in this issue, we go over the origins of the Green Gimp. Yes, you heard that correctly. I'm not calling him Ultimate Green Goblin. That is Ultimate Green Goblin. That is regular Green Goblin. And that is the Green Gimp. But anyway, if you guys are fans of the Ultimate Universe, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Let's start the video. The story begins months ago with Norman Osborn and his wife. Let me guess, he's running late. I'm sure he'll be here soon, and I'm sure he'll have a good reason. No, you're either where you're supposed to be, or you're not. Anything else is just an excuse. You shouldn't offer them for him, and he shouldn't for himself. Oh, and I suppose the great Norman Osborn has never been late to anything in his life? I was, just once, and never again. Emily Osborne's phone starts to ring. This is him. We want me to? No, Emily. Let me. Harry. Hey, Dad. I'm sorry, I thought I called Mum, I... Where are you? A couple of blocks away. Harry. I know, I know. I'll be there in five minutes. Son, you know who we're supposed to be meeting with, and I've stressed how important today is. This is unacceptable. Look, I'm sorry, Dad. I'd tell you why I'm late, but it wouldn't matter, would it? No. Okay, I'll be Harry. Yes, Dad. What name do you bear? What? What name do you bear? Osborne. Yes. It is a great name. It means something. Harry. Do you know what favourite memory of you is? Yeah. That time when we played catch and... No. That's you. The little boy talking. And that memory is of a child. My favourite memory of you is the day you finally started acting like a man, like an Osborne. The problem is, it hasn't happened yet. We're all here waiting for you, Harry. How long are you going to make us wait? How much longer am I going to... And before he could end his sentence, he sees the red beam in the sky. And then we find out this is actually Harry Osborne's perspective of the events of the Ultimate Universe one-shot. In that story, it was actually Ultimate Hulk who had taken over the Maker's Council while he was away in the Dome. He had fired this off, killing hundreds of people in this event. In the next page, we go to a few weeks after that, and Harry Osborne and Gwen Stacy have visited Norman Osborne's old attorney. I knew your father for almost 40 years, 30 of them as his personal attorney, and I can't really imagine a world without him in it. I'm gonna miss him. There's really not much else I can say beyond, I'm sorry, Harry. Thank you, Bill. I hope you know he really appreciated you. I do. Is it normal for things to move this quickly? Well, Norman almost had the entirety of his estate and personal assets in a trust that the family, just Harry and now you, shared control over. As far as the company itself goes, that'll take longer. But there's really nothing to do there except go through the probate as the will is executed. Will there be any problems? The process will probably take six months. But Harry, 
You're the sole named benefactory controlling interest will be yours. Until then, both you and Gwen currently sit on the board, so your hand is already on the wheel. And frankly, I can't ever see it coming off. Oscorp will be yours. That's good. Yeah. Is there anything else you need to go over with us because we... Yes, there is one other thing. Harry, this was delivered to my office this morning. For you. As we see a, a paper with a king chess piece on there. Who could that be? What is it? I have no idea what it means, but I do know who it's from. In the next page, Harry Osborne goes to this place the next day. We see two guards with guns pull up to him. But luckily, Harry pulls out the King Peace card and they basically give him a quick stop and search. And then we see this man with the eye patch. I believe that this isn't actually Ultimate Nick Fury. I think this is actually Ultimate Bullseye without the suit. Especially when you look at the scar around his eye, and then you look at the concept art that was revealed for Ultimate Bullseye a few months ago, it's pretty easy to put two and two together. Even Harry has to tell him, like, well, I'm here. And right on time, do you know who I am? Well, you are Wilson Fisk, entrepreneur... Business Magente, Man of Influence, so on and so on. Everyone knows this. Can you tell me why they don't? With the fall of Stain and Stark and the Union now divided to propagate over other regions, there are rumours that you've secretly been named both the Shadow Governor and the Greater New York Territory as well as the kingpin of Manhattan. And Fisk just gives him a little toast there. He's like, yeah, you know who I am. I'll give you a toast for that speech, boy. I'm not a vain man, but from time to time, it is nice to hear one's name ring out. Yes, I've been named, and next week I will have been officially elevated to both positions. I'll be running things now, and you should be very pleased about that. And why is that? Because I need a favour. One I think you are uniquely suited to provide. I'm not my father, Mr. Fisk. And even though I'm probably going to spend the next few years pretending to be, he'd be the first to tell you I don't have the influence or the pedigree. Well, you'll just have to make do. You see, I have two five-letter shadows hanging over my head. Obastias Stain has no existing family, and now there are no more Starks. There's no more arguing about the value of the company, but I need to eliminate the remnants. Keep it from rising again, because I won't be forgotten and I'm not qualified to separate Stark and wheat from the Stark chaff. I don't see what I can do about that, and with all due respect, it's your problem, not mine. Not if I sell it to you. In the next page we go to two weeks later, and we see people cutting a circle into a wall. We're in, Mr. Osborne. Super. It only took two days of cutting. How hilarious is it going to be if there's nothing in here? Not hilarious at all, dear. I still don't understand why it took so long. There's no external power running to the box, and there's a Faraday patina covering its six-inch titanium walls. If I hadn't discovered a deleted reference to it in that off-site Stark mainframe, you would have had to pull me apart. 
we'd never have known this place have existed. And that titanium isn't really titanium, but some kind of self-healing compositite. Just made it getting in even trickier, but hey, we're in now, so... Great. Let's see what we got at the garage sale. Digging through these old men's trash is going to take forever, Harry. With all we have to do, we probably just... Gwen. So, let's get this straight. Harry Osborne grows up a spoiled rich kid. His parents die. What happens after that? He gets their inheritance. He gets given Stain and Stark Industries. Then gets somebody else to break into it for him. Steal its tech. Reverse engineer it. And create the green gimp suit for him with all of its gadgets. While Harry was just out here throughout his origin been given free shit. While everyone else does something for him. What a terrible idea for a character. It's literally, we got it from Stark. Like, that's a really shitty idea for everyone to have an origin. Like, they just get it from Stark. Peter didn't actually go and try to look for answers. Stark gave it to him. Wow. So let me get this straight. Harry Osborne. Grows up a rich, spoiled brat. Loses his parents. What happens? Does he change? No. He gets their inheritance. Does he change after that? No. He gets given Stark in and Stain Industries. Does he change after that? No. He gets somebody else to break into that stuff for him. Steal the tech. Reverse engineer it. And then make him a green gimp suit with all the gadgets. And what the fuck was Harry doing while Otto Octavius was breaking into Stark Industries for him? Nothing. He was just being a spoiled rich brat. We lost Ultimate Green Goblin for somebody who's too lazy to even change even after the death of his parents. Like, wow. And I lost my parents recently, and it fucking changed me. But no, with this guy, he just gets given more free shit. I found the lights. Man, you're not gonna believe this. But no wonder why there's no need for external power. There's a fully functional arc reactor in here. I've wanted to play with one of these things for years. This is... This is all just stuff. That's a fairly comprehensive and incredibly generic view of the universe, dear. Saying it's our stuff now? No. I mean, it's all assets. There should be some re repository of data here somewhere. You know, the real gold. Here's a terminal, and I think it's attached to what I'm assuming is a data array. If what you're looking for exists, then it's probably archived here, right? You want me to? Yes. Gotta have a password to access anything. No surprise there. Great. So we're going to need to crack a team of... decryption people? And God knows how many hours or days to get... I'm in. What? It was Anthony with a zero. Parents and their kids, right? Some of them. So, what are we looking at here? It looks like everything. Accounts, suit designs. Hey, what are these all history folders? What is... Otto. It's Dr. Octavius. Otto. Yes? You need to sign a new NDA. Gwen? Otto has an NDA. No. He's gonna need a new one with more teeth, understand? Because if I don't, I can't play with all the new toys? That's right, no new toys for you. Where do I sign? So basically, this should be called, like, Dr. Octavius' origin, really, because he does most of the heavy lifting, or does most of the work in 
And not most, actually. I would say nearly all of the work. This should be called Dr. Octopus. Not the degree Gibbs Origin. Because he didn't do anything. He didn't even create his own suit. He had to get somebody else to go reverse engineer somebody else's tech. And steal from that person. But yeah, people. Oh, and Hickman. This design ain't yours. This is from the Sam Raimi movie. This is an ultimate green goblin. So you basically don't want to honor the creator of Ultimate Spider-Man's creations, but you want to go steal from somebody else's instead? And then when you give that person their origin, it's literally them not doing anything, but stealing. So he was incompetent of even creating his own suit. Why should he even be the goblin? He doesn't deserve it. Clearly he's a rich person. Brick who doesn't do anything with his life. Why should he be the goblin? Give us back ultimate green goblin like we asked. But no, we get a guy who can't even do that. I know you wanted it to be a darker shade, but it all started to look brown. Hickman. Hickman. This suit is not cool. No, it's not. It looks like a gimp suit from a deranged porno. You know those deranged pornos where those guys like to get beaten by their women and wear those black latex suits? Yeah, that's what I'm getting from this suit. I don't think Marvel. I think some weirdo who's into a weird fetish. Yeah, that's what I get from this suit. I don't see Green Goblin or Ultimate Green Goblin. I see a guy wearing a green and purple gimp suit. No, it's good, Otto. No. No, it's not Hickman. And considering what we've all learned from the files... Oh, so you know how to use a computer and look through files, but you don't know how to use a spray paint can or a paintbrush? Okay, dumbass. We have bigger fish to fry. Where are we on everything? Check these things out. These things are capable of rapid expansion. So it's a bomb. No. Well, yes, but it's not just the bomb. It depends on the payload. You can substitute the catalyst for an array of reactions. It's a bomb. And this hovercraft is powered by Stark technology. It's linked to a control node I worked into the helmet. I thought the suits could fly. They can, I think, but that's running on the arc, and I'm not comfortable enough with that yet to... I get it. Better safe than sorry. But what's that? I have no idea, but it does show up on the network. That's the silvery orb that contained the Pictotech suit with, for Spider-Man. And then Harry's like, what network? It's the reason I called you down to the lab. Yeah, you seemed a little unsettled, Otto. I'm... confused. Put on the helmet. I'll show you. Whoa, what am I looking at? All of this stuff runs on a secure network that links all the dedicated level 1 proprietary tech together. Each of those dots is another piece of Stark tech. Like the suits, an arc node, any dedicated AI on the network. Okay, I get it. So what you're looking at is a snapshot of what the network looked like two days ago. And this is what it looks like right now. Otto, what the? The first signal appeared last night. And they kept appearing every couple of minutes until they finally stopped around 6am. How many? Over a hundred. What I can't tell is they are old or dormant. Tech waking up or this is something new. Well, I guess we better find out. In the next page we go to three months ago. And this is when Spider-Man was just using his suit for the first time. And right after he got his butt kicked by Ultimate Punisher, Ultimate Shocker. 
What an idiot. Now, let's just see how much I... Excuse me? Hmm? I think you have something that doesn't belong to you. I'm keeping the money, pal. And there ain't a thing that you can do to stop me. Huh? And then we see the Green Gimp uses some sort of device that basically short circuits his gauntlets. What happened? I turned them off. Because I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the gloves. Where did you get them? I tell you where, if I can keep the money. Sure. I was robbing this guy's apartment. Turns out, he must have just died. Had a heart attack or something. Sitting in his favourite chair. Anyway, there was this light. That terrorist kid. Stark talking. And then the light stopped. And these gloves were just sitting there. So I took them. Wait, so is this another shocker that was supposed to happen? And I guess this guy just so happened to come across his dead body in the mantle? Yeah, I want to know who this guy is. I'm pretty sure this would have been the first shocker, I guess. So, Stark's alive. That would mean that he gave me the gloves and you know what? I think I'm going to keep them. And then we see Ultimate Shocker try to go in for a sneak attack, and it just don't work. And it was like, was that supposed to hurt? Sorry, sorry, I didn't. You don't understand. I've got a wife and she's sick and I'm sorry. And then the Green Gimp just knocks him out and takes the gloves. In the next page, we go to two months ago. And this is where Peter Parker and Harry go out for a drink. So, what do you do, Peter? Huh? For a living. What do you do? I, oh, I'm a photojournalist. I mostly take pictures for the Daily Bugle. Are you married? Yeah, you too, right? Uh-huh. Maybe we'll do dinner sometime or something like that. Uh, let's see how drinks go first. That, that kind of looked a bit sus, that look there. Mm. So, don't you want to know what I do? Harry, I can call you Harry. Of course. Harry, right now you're probably the most well-known person in the city. Everyone knows your name and what you do for a living. You don't need to tell me anything. I know who you are. Actually, Peter... What you're referring to is a product of public relations and marketing. And it doesn't have anything to do with what I really do for a living. And what's that? Tell me something. Did Tony Stark appear to you out of the thin air and give you your suit? Um... There was a little more than, than that, but yeah... Did the same thing happen to you? No. I found out all of this the hard way. Care to define the hard way? Well, after Stark was involved in the death of my parents, I inherited my father's company. And then I was given Tony Stark's company also. After that, I was reading through all the Stark's family secrets I found out that the people who gave me this company might just be the most evil people in the history of the world. And that it was very possible that they, not Stark, are the ones who really have my parents' blood on their hands. Oh no, that was Ultimate Hulk who did that. Now I would love to see you go fight Ultimate Hulk because I know you're going to get your ass handed to you. Because I don't fucking like this guy at all. So seeing Ultimate Hulk violate this brother, yeah, that will make me very happy. Which I find unacceptable. So now, I have a new job. Okay, fair enough. I guess that qualifies as the hard way. Thanks. Do you know why Stark picked you? Yeah. 
He said I was supposed to be someone else, have a different life, which was stolen from me, by the same people you're talking about, I'm guessing. And now, you're going to do something about it? He said I was supposed to be a hero, and as soon as he said it, I knew it in my bones. So yeah, of course we're going to do something about it. That's what heroes do. And then we see Harry Osborne and Peter Parker have a toast and have their beers. I liked this part of the comic. I can't lie, this was my favourite part. And then in the next page we go to now. And we see that the Green Gimp is interrogating someone. At first, I thought it was just your suit that gave you your powers. Honestly, I thought you were the suit because it took almost a month to peel you out of it. So imagine my surprise when I find out the problem went a little deeper. You have some ex embedded exoskeleton under your skin. And while it's impressive taking it off, well... That had to hurt. I have a feeling this is Ultimate Bullseye without his outfit on, purely based on the scar around his eye patch. Ultimate Bullseye actually has that scar in the concept art that was revealed a few months back. Pain is a part of the process. And the eye? What's that about? My master lost his. My brothers and sisters tore ours out in solidarity. Do you have any idea what kind of devotion it takes to do such a thing? That's what you're dealing with. Oh, I believe you're committed. I believe your master. All your masters are. The world is evidenced of that. But you need to understand, I am committed too. You're going to give me answers because I need them. You're going to tell me everything, and I don't care how long it takes to get what I want. Hmm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with lying to yourself. It's what most people do to get through the day. But I've seen it all, son, and I promise you. Everyone thinks they want to be a hero until it actually costs something. And it always does. We make sure of that. Then we get to see what you really are. My father always talked about the difference of being a boy and a man. And maybe he was right. Maybe you are too. Am I a boy or a man? Am I a hero or something else? And then we see the time skips to May. I guess we're about to find out. And that is where issue number five of Ultimate Spider-Man ends. So that was Ultimate Spider-Man issue number five. And personally, this got issue was just bad. It was basically watching a rich, a spoiled rich kid lose his parents and basically get spoiled even more. He didn't do anything. He watched his parents get murdered. He didn't really learn from it. He didn't really become a different person from it. And he just gets given things. And it's basically other people doing his work for him. And then by the end of it, he's basically just being a spoiled kid. And he's interrogating somebody in a green gimp suit. So it's like... People try to act like the, old, the original Ultimate Universe was bad. And it's like, for the most part, no it wasn't. It was really Ultimate 3 and Ultimatum. And some of Ultimate X-Men as well. Can't even deny that. And, but that was really it. There's hundreds of books in the Ultimate Universe. And now people are trying to act like all of them were bad. And it's like, no, only two storylines were bad in a few X-Men books. That was all. But when it comes down to this, this origin was basically, somebody else did everything for me. The Green Gimp. 
But anyway, if you guys enjoy this, then you guys enjoy garbage characters, I suppose. But you do you. Peace.